everyone. Greetings from Campus Baptist Church. Today, this morning, we do celebrate the Easter Sunday, our Lord's Resurrection Day, through our online service. And we are very glad for those who are watching on online service. And uh, since because of the blocked or block down days that we cannot have our worship service at our campus, but our friends and our church members and our friends and the families, we like to appreciate you if you like to give your tithes and offering. And through this uh, online, you can see the account number and you can give to God your tithes and your offering to this given uh, account number. You can worship God through your giving. We appreciate if you do that. Praise the Lord. And uh, for this morning, before we start, let's look to God in prayer. Shall we pray? God in heaven, we do thank you and praise you for this morning. Though we could not gather together in this campus Baptist Church. But Lord, we thank you for this online service that our members, our friends, and our families could watch through online and we can worship God together. Heavenly Father, we also pray that you would bless us this morning to commemorate our Lord's resurrection and I'll spend our times to the worship of our God Almighty. God in heaven, we especially do pray for thy servant, Dr. P.D. Serian, who is bringing the message to us this morning, that you would speak through him that we may be challenged this morning and we may have a saint's life and we may walk in the likeness of our Savior. We commit the entire program into your mighty care. You would bless us all together. With thanksgiving we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God's people say amen. Let's listen to a few songs from our uh, kids.
Thank God for the songs. We appreciate. We are really blessed with that. Now, this morning, for our time of worship and time for testimony, though we cannot hear you, you are at home, but I truly believe that you'll worship God together with us this morning. For our worship, we'll go to Psalm number 118. It has 29 verses. And I'm not going to read all of these verses. I'm going to read first four verses and from the last part, few verses, and then we'll go a few minutes of worship time. Psalm number 118, first four verses. Here it says, All give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, because His mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say, that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endureth forever. We'll skip a few verses, and now I'm going to read from verse number 21. 21. I will praise thee, for thou hast heard me, and art become my salvation. The stone which the builders refuse is become the headstone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, say now prosperity. Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed 
you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, which had sold us light. Bind the sacrifice with coats, even unto the horns of the altar. Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I will exalt thee. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. May the Lord bless us through the reading of this psalm. This psalm, Psalm number 118, is the final psalm, or we call, uh, the theologians call, Egyptian harlots. It starts from 113, and this is the end of the Egyptian uh, Hallel Psalms, and is the end and the sixth one. And if you see that 118 Psalm, it's very interesting because the previous one, 117, is the shortest of the Psalms or the shortest chapter in the Bible. The, the following one, Psalm 119, is the longest chapter in the Bible. So it comes between the shortest and the longest chapters of the Bible. And I choose this psalm particularly because of the few verses it speaks of the Lord's resurrection. Therefore, I willfully choose this psalm. It is not easy to outline this psalm. Because if you see in this psalm, uh, there you could see in the contents of the psalm that the psalmist speaks about. And then the priest, the high priest, uh, reply or speaks. And there is a corporate worship and also that the reply from the congregation. And then the psalmist speaks again. So there are multiple ways we can see in the contents of the psalm, and it's difficult to make outline. However, I just divide this psalm in four sections. Uh, verses 1 to 4, here the psalmist mentioned about his calling people to worship God. He said, praise, praise God for his loyal love. This is verses 1 to 4. The second section is verses 5 through 13. Here, Samis draws our attention and he says, Praise God, for he is our Savior. And the third section is verses 14 through 21. This second section and the third section we do not read. And here, the psalmist draws our another attention and he said that let's praise God because he is our strength. Our, and our song. And the last section of this psalm, verses 22 to 29, here the psalmist gives our attention, and draws our attention, I mean, that for he is our salvation. Therefore, God's people must praise him. If you see again, verses 5 through 21, it's a personal praise. Psalmist the writer, the author, the anonymous, the unknown writer of this psalm is praising the Lord alone in these lines, verses 5 through 21. But the verses 1 to 4 is uh, an invitation. And he is calling people that all give thanks unto the Lord for he is good because his mercy endured forever. The psalmist is drawing our attention because in spite of the circumstances that you might go through, in this time of trouble, in this time of peril, people may question to God and of his goodness. But the psalmist here is saying that God's plan and his purposes are always for absolute good. If you see, in the light of eternity, all his purposes, all his motives and plans are for absolute good. As in the book of Romans says, all things work together for good. You may be going through sufferings, 
You may be going through trials in the sufferings or perils in life if you look at God and you can see that God's goodness in our lives. God is always good to us and His, His good is beyond measure. He's always good. Dispensations may vary, but His nature is always the same. Our God is always good. Therefore, Sammy says, All give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. And for His mercy, because His mercy endureth forever. And verse 2, the psalmist speaks to the nation Israel. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. And he also addressed to the high priest Aaron. And he said, let the house of Aaron, the Levites, now say that his mercy endureth forever. If you see from verse 5 onward, verses 1 to 4, psalmist is giving attention or the Invitation for God's people to join with him to the praise of God. If you see that verse 5 onward up to verse number 21, Psalmist started praising God. He himself put the lines after lines and praising God. If you read all these verses, the Psalmist gives reasons after reasons why we should praise the Lord. And verse number 5, just to mention one word here in verse number 5, because the psalmist called upon the Lord in the time of distress. And he says there, the Lord answered me. Dear friends, those who are online, recollect God's blessings in your lives. How many times God had answered your prayers and my prayers? And the psalmist says here, God answered my prayer. This is enough reason that we should give testimony and praises to God Almighty because He answered our prayer. And the psalmist, the writer, the author, experienced that God answered his prayer and set me in a large place. Verse number 6 is mentioned here. One more thing to mention here. There are so many reasons he gave, lines after line, uh, in this poem, in this song, that he praises God. Verse number 60 says, a beautiful word, he says, the Lord is on my side. And he knew that God is real to him, God is on his side. And he said, I will not fear, what can man do unto me? The psalmist was pretty sure that Lord is in his sight. Let's come down to verse number 21. And he says, I would praise thee for thou hast heard me and art become my salvation. He said, God is my salvation. God has heard my prayer. Therefore, I will praise thee. Praise thee. Verses 5 through 21, his personal praise. Verse 22 is another important verse on this day of uh, Easter Sunday. And here the psalmist says, The stone which the builders refuse is become the headstone of the corner. It speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. The stone which the builders refuse become the headstone that connects the two walls speaks about our connection with God. God, Christ, is the mediator that connects people, the sinner, and God through him. We can speak many of things of this particular verse, but here the psalmist praises God because the stone, talking about Christ, which the builders rejected or refused, become the headstone of the corner. And verse number 23 says, this is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. Dear friends, this stone is from the Lord. It is His choosing. It is His appointing. And it is His laying. 
And he exalted this stone and he put it at his right hand. Then he made it above every name and above every creature and above everything. God had exalted this stone which the builder refused. And the psalmist says in verse number 23, Be part, it is marvelous too in our eyes. This stone itself is wonderful. We look at the stone, who is talking about Christ, at its beauty and at its strength and its usefulness, at its wisdom and the love. We can all, as the psalmist says, we can all be wonderful. This is a stone. And the verse number 24, it says that this is the day which the Lord had made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Think about this particular day as it were a new day. You remember Christ's day? We have celebrated Good Friday, maybe at your respective places and houses. You might worship God. We, in, uh, for, for my part, with my family, we worship God at our home on last Friday. And we remember the Lord's date and uh, His suffering and His burial. And uh, today, the resurrection day, as it were, a new day. You remember last Friday, uh, Good Friday, He was in the, in the danger of death. And his days were likely to be cut off and endeth. Maybe Satan thought that Christ the Messiah would be cut off and he would be no more. He is crucified. He is buried. And his days would be cut off. But God has another move. That another move is this new day, this particular day that Christ had been resurrected from the dead, and God had exalted him. The psalmist thought about a particular day, maybe in his life, a day that God made him great. But this particular verse is speaking also about the resurrection of the Easter Sunday. Because this is a day that we can praise God that our salvation is completed. Because our master, our savior, who died for us on the cross of Calvary, resurrected on this particular day. Some thousands, two thousand years ago, on that particular day of Easter, Christ rose again from the dead on the Sunday morning. Therefore, the psalmist praises the Lord. Today, we also like to praise God together of this resurrection day. Verse 26, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. Let's conclude. Verse number 28, the psalmist says, Thou art my God, and I will praise thee. Thou art my God, I would exalt thee. All give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. My dear friends, the psalmist gives reasons after reasons. Lines after lines in this poem, in this psalm, in this song, for praising God, particularly he heard our prayer, and he is on our side, and he answers our prayers, and he protected us, and he has given us provisions. Reasons are given here in these lines of the psalm, and particularly this day. This is the day that the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it because this is the day our Savior, our Master, had been resurrected. Therefore, remember God's blessings this morning, especially His salvation and His answer prayers in our prayers and also His blessings in our lives. Let us remember those things and let us praise Him. Shall we praise together? I would like to give those who are online a minute Less, maybe less than a minute's time. You may bow down wherever you are and let us remember his blessings in your life, his answered prayers, and his particular blessings in your family, in your life, and his salvation, 
and today particularly of his resurrection. You remember all these things. Let us praise God. How many times I'll be giving you silently, and you may, in your homes, in your places, you may worship God. Shall we? How many times? Yes. Time is given to the online listeners and hearers. Yes. You may take time to worship God. Yes, if you worship God, we uh, praise God for that. And let us worship with me now. Uh, let's all bow down to worship God. And I'll pronounce prayer or worship or thanksgiving for the congregation. Those who are online in your, at your respective places. Let's pray, God, we thank you for this morning, especially on this resurrection day. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Heavenly Father, we remember this is the day that our salvation had been perfected. Yesterday, Saturday, was a gloomy day because our Savior was in the tomb. In the tomb. And the disciples were confused what to do next, what will happen at the next, what they should do. They were totally confused. But on this Sunday morning, a particular day that you made it new, you have laid it aside that your son, our Lord Jesus Christ, would be resurrected. This is the day that you have made it, and we are glad, glad in it. Heavenly Father, this is the day that our salvation is perfected, and we are very, very glad in it, along with the psalmist. Praise you for all your marvelous grace and unfathomable love that you have bestowed upon us through thy Son in our lives. We thank you, we praise you for answering our prayers. We worship you this morning along with the online lookers. That we bow down before you. We give you our obeisance unto you. And we like to say it together. Thank you, God, for saving our souls. Thank you, God, for making us thy children. Thank you, God, particularly for this resurrection day. We worship you. We give you praise and honor in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. May God bless you. Now we'll listen to uh, another songs, and after that we'll, have, we'll listen to the preaching also. Thank you.
the grave he arose with a mighty triumphant boast. He arose the victor from the dark domain, and he lives forever with the saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Happy Easter to everyone. Trust you are all taking good precaution to protect yourselves from coronavirus. It is great to do all what we can do to protect ourselves and the people who are around us. The book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 31 says, The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Easter Sunday, the whole world celebrates the resurrection of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We have a message to proclaim, that is, Jesus Christ is risen. Let us remember the doctors, nurses, paramedics, and the sanitary workers who are at the front line at the risk of their own lives to save the life of others. Though we are not able to worship the Lord together, let us worship Him from wherever we are at this moment. May God Almighty protect you and your families from this pandemic. This morning I would like to bring a message on the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please turn your Bibles with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And I would like to read two portions from this chapter 15, verses 1 to 9 and also verses 12 to 21. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that he was seen above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called the apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. Verses 12 to 19. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how ye say among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. A, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. You are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. Now, is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept? For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Let us pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your word. Lord, we thank you for this privilege of our words to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. While others are worshipping the gods that are dead, we can worship the true and the living God. Lord, I pray that will truly speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The title of the message is, Why 
the resurrection of Jesus Christ is important. There are many reasons, but I would like to give you four main reasons. Number one, resurrection is the cornerstone of Christianity. Number two, resurrection is an integral part of the gospel. Number three, resurrection validates our faith and preaching. Number four, resurrection guarantees our resurrection. Religious leaders of the world established various religions, but they all died like any other man. Unlike other religions, Christianity possesses a founder who transcends death and promises that his followers will do the same. Every other religion was founded by men or prophets whose end was the grave. As Christians, we know that God became man died for our sins and was resurrected the third day, the grave could not hold him down. He lives and he sits today at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 12. The most and glory of Christianity is the empty tomb of the Lord Jesus Christ. Satan shudder and shiver at the very thought of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Because the resurrected one, the Lord Jesus Christ, will cast him into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 verse 10 says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophets are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Many try to disprove the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1998, Lee Strobel, a reporter of the Chicago Tribune, and a graduate of Yale Law School published The Case for Christ. Strobel had formerly been an atheist and was compelled by his wife's conversion to Christianity to refute the key Christian claims about Jesus. He took the task of disproving the resurrection of Christ. He approached the subject by asking four questions. Was Jesus really dead? Did believers invent this theory? Was the tomb actually empty? Did people actually see Jesus alive? He concluded his research with this note and said, disproving the resurrection wasn't easy. In fact, it was impossible. The case for the resurrection of Jesus is powerful and persuasive. That evidence led me to my own faith in Christ. And in the years since, that investigation, I have been helping other Christians understand how we can have confidence in the biblical account of the resurrection. There are many false theories concerning the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. The soon theory, first it was suggested by H. G. Paulus, a German theologian and a critic of the Bible, that the cool, damp air of the tomb somehow revived Jesus after three days and he decided to exit. Then the hallucination theory. The hallucination theory asserts that the many people who saw Jesus in his resurrection body just imagined doing so. Then another one, the conspiracy theory. The conspiracy theory suggests that Christ's disciples simply stole his body and fabricated the resurrection today. Christian faith stands or falls on the basis of Christ's bodily resurrection. In other words, resurrection is the cornerstone of Christianity. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 to 19, Christ appeared to many after his resurrection, and that he was seen of Cephas and of the twelve, after that, he was seen of 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remains unto this present. But some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as a one born out of due time. It is true. No one saw the actual resurrection. Many saw the resurrected Jesus. In verse 5 to 8, Paul mentions six resurrection appearances. This is not a comprehensive list. At least 
four more appearances are mentioned in the Bible. Apostle Paul says, last of all, he was seen of me also. It truly revolutionized the life of the disciples and they became carriers of the gospel around the world. Christ's resurrection is an integral part of the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15 verse, verses 3 to 4 in verse 1. Paul affirms that the gospel which he preached to them was not his invention or his opinion, but it was received. In verse 4 and 5 he says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. The true gospel is the death, burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice the phrase, according to the scriptures. His birth, death, burial, resurrection are all prophesied in the Old Testament. There are many, and I would like to quote two. Psalm 16, verse 10. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. The same verse Apostle Peter quoted in that great sermon he preached on the day of Pentecost, where 3,000 people got saved. Apostle Paul likewise quoted it in his sermon in Acts chapter 13, verse 35. Wherefore he said also in another psalm, Thou shalt not suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Hosea chapter 6, verse 2, After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Gospel is not completed without the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Often people ask the question, do we have to believe in the resurrection of Christ to be saved? The answer is yes. We read in the book of Romans chapter 9, 10, verse 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Notice also Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Who was delivered for our offenses and was raised for our justification. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Christ's resurrection validates our faith and preaching. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 14 to 19. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up. If so be that the dead raised not. For if the dead raised not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, you are yet in your sins, then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. Apostle Paul says, take out the resurrection, then there is nothing left in Christianity. Then he gives us this inevitable conclusion of not believing in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. What if Christ is not resurrected? Our preaching is vain. The word vain means useless. Think about over 2,000 years, missionaries have been preaching the gospel to all the five continents of the world. Millions of men and women have sacrificed their lives to preach the gospel. Many of them have been beaten, slaughtered, burned at stake, tortured, and crucified upside down. If Christ hasn't resurrected, all the suffering they underwent was useless. Then Apostle Paul says, your faith is vain. All what you believed about the Son of God, the forgiveness of sins, of those trusted in Him for salvation, and the eternal punishment for those rejected Him are all futile. You are still under condemnation. Then he says, if Christ is not risen, we are found false witnesses, which means all the apostles are liars because they testified that God had raised him up. If Christ is not risen, 
than those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Those dead in Christ, their souls are lost. They are in misery in the unseen world. The word perished means ruined, destroyed. Then he says, if Christ is not resurrected, our hope is limited to this world only. Our most cherished hope of living with him, all eternity, only a wishful thinking. On April 8, 2017, BBC reported, and I quote, a quarter of people who describe themselves as Christians in Great Britain do not believe in the resurrection of Jesus. Friends, their belief will not change the fact those who do not believe in life after death, their philosophy is, if life ends at death, why not live it up? Apostle Paul describes the attitude of those who do not believe in the resurrection, says in 1 Corinthians 15, 32, let us eat and drink, tomorrow we die. Our faith is in the word of God. This is the reason why Apostle Paul said in verse 3 of chapter 15, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. Our confidence is in the word of God. Matthew chapter 24, verse 35, we read, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Finally, resurrection of Christ guarantees our resurrection at the rapture. 1 Corinthians 15 Verses 51 to 55, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that it is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? If Christ hasn't resurrected, we have no hope of resurrection. Resurrection is the final defeat of death. O oh, what a day that will be when our Savior comes to receive us. We call it the rapture. We read it in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. For key events Apostle Paul gives in verse 16 and 17. The return of Christ, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven. The resurrection of the believers, the dead in Christ shall rise first. The rapture, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. The words caught up, it is a reference to the rapture. The reunion, the reunion occurs when the resurrected and the living in Christ meet one another and together to meet the Lord. This is only possible because we have a resurrected Savior. If you are a child of God, then you will be included in this resurrection. Bible also speaks of another resurrection where non-believers will be raised. And you don't want to be involved in that resurrection. Revelation chapter 20 verse 5 and 6. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and a Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. I trust that you will take a moment and think of your own salvation. If you are not saved, ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. In the light of the resurrection of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, what should be our response? And I would like to give you a few thoughts. We read it in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor 
is not in vain in the Lord. Apostle Paul challenges the Christians to be steadfast. That is, don't always be moving around. Be stable. Be strong in your conviction. Unmovable. Not to be moved from its place. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. The word abounding means over and above. It is not that which is just required of you to do. He is talking about the labor of love. Your faith is not in vain in the Lord. One author puts it this way, and I quote, Because we know we will be resurrected to new life, we can endure persecution and danger for Christ's sake, just as our Lord did. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, thousands of Christian martyrs through history have willingly traded their earthly lives for everlasting life and the promise of resurrection. The epistle of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 and 20, Apostle Paul mentions the mighty power of God by which he raised Jesus from the dead. And then he tells the believers that the exceeding greatness of his power comes toward us who believe. The same power is available for every believer to walk in the newness of life. One of the aspirations of Apostle Paul was to know him and the power of his resurrection. May this be our heart desire to know him and the power of his resurrection in our daily walk with him. In an application, may I say, what the world needs today is a resurrection from their dead works of immorality, lust, carnality, and perversions. This can only happen when men and women cry unto God to save them from their sins and accept Him as their personal Savior and God. May God give us great victory to walk in the newness of life. Let us say with the redeemed of all ages, He is risen. He is risen indeed. Lord, we thank you and praise you for speaking to our hearts this morning. Lord, thank you for helping us to understand from your holy word why the resurrection is important. What is our responsibility in the light of your word? Lord, I pray that will truly help each one of us to walk a worthy walk before this great Savior who resurrected from the grave. Father, we pray that will truly help us to abound in the work of God which you have placed in our hands. Knowing the fact someday we are going to stand before God Almighty to give an account how we lived here upon this earth. Lord, I pray that will truly continue to speak to us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christian, lift up your voice and sing.
thank God for the songs we heard. That was excellent. We appreciate that. We also praise God for the message we heard this morning. Let's close this session with a word of prayer. So we pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for this online program. We thank you for our members that presented songs to the online people. We thank you for the blessedness of the songs that our hearts been blessed this morning. We especially, Lord, like to say thank you for the message that came to us through thy servant about the significance of the resurrection of our Savior. For this is the cornerstone of Christianity. And this is the integral part of our faith and the gospel. And this validates our preaching and our faith. And it also guarantees of our own resurrection. Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless us to remember these points, this importance of these points in our lifetime, and be thankful to you. Heavenly Father, we also pray that you would bless us to commemorate our Lord's resurrection day, and we may spend this day with praises and giving honor to your holy name. And as we disperse this program, we ask that you would dismiss us with your heavenly blessings. With thanksgiving this all we pray in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all.